Hey, what is going on guys? It is Zach with the Firefly Remedy and today I'm gonna to be showing you guys how I make my thumbnails for my YouTube videos. So, I just wanna tell you guys to not be intimidated because it's really not that complicated. When I was learning how to make my thumbnails, I was very discouraged and I was kind of intimidated because there's a lot to know, but at the same time, you can learn very basic stuff and that's what this video is based around, just the basics and that'll show you how to make eye-catching thumbnails even without being a very talented graphic designer or whatever you want to call it. But anyway guys, let's get right into it. Also, if you could drop a like rating, that would really help me out. So the first website we're going to go to, it's a link in the description, and it's called GIMP, and you're going to download that. Uh, but before you download it, make sure you click on the proper uh, computer that you are running here, whether that be Linux, uh, OS X, or Windows. And then I'm not going to show you how to download that because it's very self-explanatory. So once you do that, uh, you're going to want to close GIMP. Make sure it's not open because the next website we're going to go to is called thefont.com. And that will also be linked in the description below. And whenever you go to defont.com, you're going to find a screen like this. Now, typically what I do is go to the top, and uh, some of the fonts that I really like to use, uh, I'll be using them in this video. Uh, they are American Captain, Bada Boom, and Kenyan Coffee. Kenyan Coffee is actually used by FaZe, and it's very popular. But uh, you can scroll down, look for something you like. There's literally thousands upon thousands of things to look at. And as you can see right here, Better Together Caps, kind of like that, so I'm going to download it. And you're going to click on the zip file when that's ready to go, so give it a second. And once that's ready, you're going to click on it, and you're going to see this little, you see this README, and there's a full version, there will be some other things, depending on the font that you choose. But you're going to click on the one that says the font file, the true type font file. And you're going to copy that, or you can click Control C and you're going to go down to your hard drive or your C drive, whatever, and you're going to find the GIMP file. Now it's going to differ based on what you're running and what kind of computer you have, but you should be able to find it. And go to the GIMP file, go to fonts, and you're going to find the font that you have. Here's all the other fonts I have if you want to check them out. These are all really cool fonts. But the Better Together caps, we're going to double click that and we are going to install that. I apparently already have it installed, so I'm going to click no, alright? But you're going to click yes, and it takes like two seconds to install, and then you should be good, alright? So you're going to X out of that, you can exit out of the font, and uh, you should be good. So next, we're going to open up GIMP again. Now, once again, if you didn't have it closed when you were on defont.com downloading your fonts, the fonts will not be on this GIMP. You'll have to close out and do it again, but anyway, just to let you know. So GIMP, I like to call it the free version of Photoshop. It's really simple to use. It's obviously free, and uh, let's just get into it. So what you're going to do first is go to File, New. You're going to set the image size to 1280 by 720, the standard size for a thumbnail on YouTube. And you're going to want a background first. That's your first step. So you're going to minimize this. I already have a picture saved. I got this from my Elgato and I'm going to show you what I'm going to do with it, but uh, we're going to open that up first. Uh, actually, I'll show you something first. Uh, a lot of people typically when they do backgrounds, they go for something like this, the sunburst. So you can go to Google and uh, you go to images and you got sunburst. And as you can see right here, the dimensions on these can vary. Like this one's 720 by 720. That's not going to fit. There's a scaling tool on GIMP that you can use, but sometimes it distorts the image. So if you want to make it a bit simpler on yourself, just search up Sunburst 1280 by 720. And you'll get a bunch of results that's 1280 by 720. And uh, you can pick one. You can copy. Uh, I like this one. Uh, we'll copy, save him a jazz, sunburst, and we'll save that to the desktop. All right, can minimize that. And uh, what we're going to do here is go into GIMP. Now, this is going to be like a little gaming uh, thumbnail, but all these tips I'm showing you, you can show them to, you can use them to make virtually anything. Now, one thing I've noticed that can be a little weird about the dimensions, even though both are set to 1280 by 720, as you can see here, there's like a little tiny sliver of white at the bottom that'll show up. And I don't know why it does that, but there's a scale layer right here 
I just kind of eyeball it and make it a bit bigger. If you want to really get technical, there is a button right here. It's the scale tool, and you can like click and drag the image and uh, whatnot. But anyway, it should fit the screen now. All is good. And what we're going to do now, if you're making like a gaming thing, this is how I typically make it. I don't use the sunburst or anything like this, but I thought it'd be a bit cooler. Uh, usually, I'll use this little background that you can see right here, and um, I'll cut out the weapon, which I'm going to do for you right here. So what we're going to do here, we're going to go to view, we're going to zoom it in a little bit, uh, just to make it a bit easier on us here. And what we're going to do here, there's a little tool right here. If you want to cut something out, it looks like a little lasso. It's called the free select tool. And what we're going to do here, you know, I'm going to fast forward it, but it's basically really self-explanatory. You're just going to click and just connect the dots to outline your image. And let me do that real quick. All right, so as any connect the dots would go, you're gonna wanna finish where you started. So now, as you can see, we've got some little moving ants or whatever you wanna call it, a little blinking dots. And from here, you're gonna click Control I, and then you're gonna click Delete. So now you have this floating image of, well, in this case, my guy reloading his Man of War, his weapon. And you can click Control Shift A, or you can go to Select None. And uh, now the little dots are gone. And now what we can do here is click this Move tool. You can kind of drag it into the corner. Uh, we can scale it. I usually eyeball this, but I'll show you the other way to scale it. Actually, let's go to uh, View Zoom Out, so we can see the entire thing again. You might notice a little sliver of uh, the background there, so we can just get a eraser and take care of that no big deal if it's not erasing it's because you have the wrong layer selected select the layer with the weapon not the sunburst and you'll erase it because if you click on the sunburst start to erase you'll notice it goes away so control Z to undo that and we're good to go alright so now we can click on the where is it the scale button scale tool to make this a bit bigger um, you can click and drag here I don't really like to do this, I just like to eyeball it and just like do this whenever I scale the layer. Just go up a little bit and then there we go, that looks okay. Um, you can drag it out a bit if you want to show more of the weapon. All right. And what I like to do here, I like to really make the weapon pop. And so you'll right click on the layer with your weapon, all right, or the image that you're using, all right. Not the actual background with the sunburst. You'll click alpha to selection and you're going to go to select grow and we want this to really pop all right so let's do we'll have it grow by 10 go to 10 and we'll give it a white background now nah, we'll give it a black background all right so we'll click on that and before we do that we'll right click on this image again and we'll click new layer okay and now while we're on the new layer click on this and now you're gonna drag this image above that, like so. And you can click Control Shift A, and you've got a nice little outline there. Okay, so we wanna make this stand out a bit more. We can go on this layer here with the uh, little background that we just did for the weapon. And we can just go to Filters, Blur, Gaussian Blur, and how about something like 25. Boom. Alright, that kind of looks pretty cool. And now, onto our text, we can do something like this. We're going to click the little A for the text, we'll drag here, and we'll, since this is a gaming thumbnail, we'll just type in gaming. And now we can select that, and one of the fonts I like to use is Kenyan Coffee. Alright, so now we can just kind of mess with the size a bit. All right, and we'll move this up a little bit, and now we will click on that, Alpha 2 Selection, and then we will select two colors that we want to use. Since the background's red and yellow, orange and yellow, we'll do something like blue and white, 
and we can reverse this. I like to have the lighter color on the top. And we'll click this little blending tool right here, and you just drag about halfway down, and you get something like that. So now we can go to select, grow. We'll do something like five. All right. And now we'll click on this little bucket tool, go to where it says the gaming or whatever text you just put there, and you're going to click on new layer. Click OK. And now we'll click on this. Actually, we need to change this to black. There we go. Now we'll click on it. And then we'll drag that above here. We'll go to filters, light and shadow, drop shadow, boom. The thing that differentiates the Gaussian from the, uh, the drop shadow, if the drop shadow is too close to the edge, it will like extend the image and it just looks weird. You'll know what I'm talking about if it happens to you, trust me. But just to clean this up a bit, we can kind of merge down some of these layers. Um, and there we go. So now we'll just go over here, make another little text tab, and we'll type in thumbnail. Select that. And now we can select something like bada boom. Uh, there it is. All right. Might have to extend this a bit to make it fit. And uh, we can kind of make this a bit wonkier here. We can turn it a bit, click on the rotate tool. And we can drag this over here. And now we can actually go alpha to selection. And then we'll do the same color scheme again. Reverse these. And there we go. And now we can go to select row. Five still works. Change this to black. And get the paint bucket tool. But before you uh, click on anything, because if you don't add a new layer, here's what happens. It does that. So control Z, uh, new layer, enter. Now click the paint bucket. Drag the blue over the black. And now we can go over to tools, I mean filters, light and shadow, drop shadow, okay, control shift A or select none, whichever you prefer. And now we can add one more thing. I'm going to give you another little lesson about how to get images here. So we'll go to Google again. And uh, how about we'll go to the Call of Duty logo? We want that. Call of Duty logo. PNG. PNG is so important because that makes it transparent and that's what you're looking for. If you can't find a transparent image, you're probably going to have to cut it out like I just did there. Okay, so we'll make some black text. We'll save image as uh, COD. Desk. Save that to the desktop. We'll minimize that and uh, just drag it on here. Okay, I like to eyeball it yet again whenever I scale the layer. I don't know, it's just a preference thing. So, see how that looks. Make it a bit smaller. Once again, there is a way to actually drag this, which, if you forget, it's right here. Alright, so I kind of like the size right here. I want to turn this a bit. So, do that. I think it needs to be a bit smaller. So, we'll select that. There we go. Alright, so now. We can drag this a bit more into the corner, and we can click Alpha 2 Selection. We're just going to keep the font black. And we can go to Select, Grow, 4. And then we can go to New Layer, we'll change this to White, Paint Bucket, click on that. And now we drag this above it, like so. And if we want to add like a little Gaussian blur to it or something, we can click on the white background behind the Call of Duty, if you know what I'm talking about. Click on that, go to Filters, Blur, Gaussian, and we'll keep it at 25. That should do the trick. That looks pretty good. And now we can pretty much export this. You can add more to it if you want, but this is about as basic as a thumbnail as it gets. Pretty simple to make. I hope I was easy to understand and follow. 
Um, once again, leave a like rating if you thought this was helpful. And if you want to see more tutorials like this, how I make my stuff. And with that being said, I will catch you all later. Also, also, to export it, it's very simple. File export as. That's pretty much it, guys. Thanks again for watching. Peace out.